Good morning, family, and happy Father's Day to all the dads. By the way, today is also the first day of summer. Well, we've been looking at passages from the Gospel according to Mark. Last Sunday, Jesus told us about the importance of small things and that small things can turn into big things. That's how the kingdom of God works. This morning, I'd like us to pick up right where we left off last week in Mark chapter 4. Following the two parables about tiny seeds yielding large harvests, Jesus invited his disciples to get into a boat and sail across to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. The result is a fascinating storm story. Here's how Mark records it. Hear the word of the Lord. Later that day, when evening came, Jesus said to them, Let's cross over to the other side of the lake. They left the crowd and took him in a boat, just as he was. Other boats followed along. Gale force winds arose and waves crashed against the boat so that the boat was swamped. But Jesus was in the rear of the boat, sleeping on a pillow. They woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care that we're drowning? He got up and gave orders to the wind, and he said to the lake, Silence, be still. The wind settled down, and there was a great calm. Jesus asked them, Why are you frightened? Don't you have faith yet? Overcome with awe, they said to each other, Who then is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gale force winds arose and waves crashed against the boat so that the boat was swamped. When I was a young teenager, I went on a mission trip, which meant that we had to cross the Caribbean from Miami, Florida, to the Dominican Republic. Other than a quick foray into Canada when I was in fifth grade, it was the first time I had been to another country. One moment I was in Miami, Florida, USA, and in a culture that was familiar to me. The next I was in Santo Domingo, the capital of the Dominican Republic, and in a world that was, in some ways, vastly different from the one I had known. I remember as we landed and taxied down the runway toward the Santo Domingo airport. That was when I noticed armed soldiers standing guard on the roof of the airport. And that's when it dawned on me that I had crossed into a foreign land where lots of things were different than they were back home. And I was more than a little bit scared. And that's where we find the disciples this morning. Jesus and the Twelve were sailing across a large body of water, the Sea of Galilee, to be precise. But notice what else was going on here. They were moving from the Jewish side of the sea to the Gentile side. They were moving from one side where they felt at home to the other side where they would be strangers and outsiders. From the side where life was familiar to the side where things would be different and unfamiliar. Now, you may have never crossed the Sea of Galilee, but you've certainly been in that boat, haven't you? Please make sure that you see what this story is and is not about. This is not a story about a boat trip that took a bad turn. This is not a story about weather conditions. This is, however, a story about life. It's also a story about faith, and this story is about fear. Because whenever you find one of those things, life, faith, or fear, you will also find the other two, won't you? They go together, and they cannot be separated. Sometimes the sea of life can be rough. Have you learned that yet? Of course you have. The winds of life can be strong, and the waves can be intimidating, and sometimes your boat takes on water and threatens to sink like a stone. But I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, am I? Each of us has a storm story or two, don't we? Some of our storm stories begin with an unexpected phone call or with a doctor's visit. Some of our storm stories start with a choice we made or a mistake we could or should have avoided or a sin we committed while knowing better, right? Other storm stories tell us about how difficult relationships can be or about hopes, plans, and dreams that fell apart or the struggle to find our own way so we could enjoy some measure of independence. 
Some storm stories seem to materialize, just kind of blow up out of nowhere and take us by surprise. Other storm stories boil and brew and build as we watch helplessly. Listen, storms happen. Storms of sorrow and storms of loss, storms of suffering or confusion, storms of failure and loneliness, storms of regret and disappointment, storms of depression or uncertainty or second guessing, storms of thoughts and voices. But regardless of where or when or how our storms arise, our storms are about changing conditions. Life can become overwhelming and sometimes it gets out of control. Things don't always go our way, do they? Circumstances can seem to be too much for us to handle. The order and calm we once enjoyed can give way to chaos and it feels as if we're sinking. The water gets deeper and deeper and the distant shore, instead of getting closer and closer, gets farther and farther away. In today's gospel passage, the disciples in the boat began to panic as the storm sets in. and Their panic quickly made their storm about Jesus. Remember what they ask? Jesus, teacher, don't you care that we're drowning? Have you ever said those words in the storms of your life? Did you whisper them? Or did you shout them? Jesus, do something. Fix this mess. Make it better. Make the storm go away, right? In the middle of the storm, it can seem like Jesus is absent. It can seem like he doesn't care or like he's sleeping. And that's where we find the disciples today. How can Jesus be asleep at a time like this? Not to overstate the obvious, but a sleeping Jesus is not what any of us want or need. But notice that even though he's asleep, Jesus is in the same boat as the disciples, isn't he? And he's in the same storm with the disciples. That means that Jesus is surrounded by the same water as the disciples, and he is blown by the same wind, and he is being tossed around by the same waves. In fact, in all the New Testament, we never find the disciples in a storm alone, do we? No. Every single time the disciples of Jesus are in a storm, Jesus is with them. Isn't that interesting? Now, even though Jesus is in the same boat, with the same storm, in the same sea, his response is not the same as the response of the disciples. When the 12 disciples sweat, Jesus slept. When the disciples hit the panic button, Jesus hits the sack. Now let me ask you this, what did the disciples expect? They certainly didn't expect a sleeping Jesus, did they? No, the disciples expected a take control type of Jesus. They expected busyness and activity. They expected action and answers. But Jesus peacefully sleeps. What does that mean? I think the fact that Jesus chose to sleep at a time like that was an indicator that the greater storm and the more substantial threat was not the wind and it was not the waves or the water on all sides of the disciples. It was not the external circumstances. The truest and greatest threat is the storm inside of us, isn't it? The real storm, the most threatening storm, is always the one that convulses and churns in our hearts and in our minds. The inner storm is the one that threatens to drown us. Our internal storms are the ones most likely to batter us and blow us off course and beat against our faith. Fear, vulnerability, and powerlessness swirl within us, don't they? The fear of abandonment, fear of the unknown, worry about judgment and criticism, both of ourselves and of others, those are the waves that pound us the worst. And far too often when the storms of life attack us, we try to find shelter in things like anger and isolation, in cynicism and denial, don't we? But Jesus, who is with us in the middle of our storm, says to the winds and waves, silence, peace be still. What's he doing here? Jesus isn't changing the weather. Jesus is inviting his disciples to change. 
Jesus is speaking to the wind and the waves, but not only the ones on the outside of the boat, he's also speaking to the storms on the inside of his disciples, and maybe even more so. The disciples were pointing to the storm raging on the outside, but Jesus points to the storm raging inside of them. Why are you frightened? Don't you have faith yet? Jesus asked his disciples. And Jesus is asking you and me the same question today. Why are you frightened? Perhaps Jesus' words are more about us than about the storms and circumstances of our lives. Why are you frightened? Is it because you don't trust Jesus? Is it because you think he's asleep when he should be doing something? Listen, you know and I know that storms happen. Faith, more faith, better faith, stronger faith, even the right kind of faith does not prevent the storms in our lives. Here's a thought. Faith does not change the storm. Faith changes us. Faith doesn't help us bypass the storms of life. Faith helps us get through the storms. Faith helps us to see and to know and to appreciate that Jesus is there in the boat with us. Faith is the thing that allows us to be still, to be peaceful in the middle of our storm. Faith means that we don't have to internalize our storm. Faith helps us to outlast the lightning and to weather the winds. Speaking of winds, the Spirit of God also blows through us and within us. In fact, the wind of the Holy Spirit blows stronger than the winds of any tempest. The power of God is stronger than any wave that beats against us, and the love of God is deeper than any water or wave that threatens to drown us. You see, in each and every storm we face, Jesus is present. Not only is he present, he always has the same response. Silence peace. Be still. In every storm we face, we have a choice to make. And so the question is, will you internalize the storm or will you internalize the peace of Jesus? Will you put your faith in the power of the storm or will you choose to trust in the power of God in Jesus? Let's pray. Good and gentle God, may your voice be the voice that relieves our fears. May your word be the word that guides and directs our lives. May your wisdom be the wisdom that inspires us. May your whisper be the whisper that reminds us of our identity. May your presence be the presence that reminds us of our calling. Lord, be our peace in all the storms that rage in us and around us. Father, we pray for those who are ill especially for those who are afflicted and affected by COVID-19. Help us to bring your love and your healing to those who desperately need it. Help us to comfort and care for those who are the last, the least, the lost, and the left out. And now using the words debts and debtors, let us pray with boldness the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today. Don't forget your job this week is to put your trust in Jesus and to love at least three people and make sure at least one of them doesn't deserve it. Why do we do that? Because everyone needs love and everyone needs to know that God loves them no matter what. And they won't know that unless we love them, right? Please don't let the storms of life rob you of your joy. With Jesus, we always, always, always have hope. Now receive these words of benediction today. May the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen.